2024 Academy Awards are tonight. We got first looks at Tron, Ares, and The Crow reboot. And after the success of Dune Part 2, will the third film get made for Denis Villeneuve's trilogy? Let's get into this week's movie news. What's up, movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast, the ultimate film and TV podcast. You know what time it is. It's movie news time, yeah, I was baby. I say, what time is it? <laughs> it is movie news, the weekly episode where we go through trailers, box office, news stories, casting announcements, and all sorts of film and TV related topics. There are a ton of trailers to go over, as well as a bunch of new movies at the box office. Let's first get into what are some of the new film releases on streaming that you can watch right now. Netflix just dropped Damsel, starring Millie Bobby Brown, and the first episode of The Gentleman from Guy Ritchie. Hulu, slow down! Now has slow down! <laughs> so <excited>. Relax! <laughs> Before the episode starts, you have these like, let's make sure we like make this like a nice long episode. I'm like, dude, you're like gunning through this whole fucking thing. Slow down, Anthony. All right, all right, all right. Literally, all right, all you're right. like, let's take it easy, man. Let's have a good episode. You're I'm just, just so excited. Running through the entire document in I 10 love seconds. movies! Let's Let's take it back yes. before we get to streaming releases. You're like doing new stuff without me. Like I don't even know what this game plan is you got going on. I got some things up my sleeve. It's because we haven't done this for two weeks. I haven't done we haven't the done news it for ten days. I'm like Ron Burgundy. Let's slow down, Anthony. Let's go back and do the box office first, like we always do. We always do the box office first. How could I forget the box office? I don't know. You're just running. You're like at the last story. Like, what, are you want to take a shit or something? Like, <laughs> what's the problem, man? All right, box office time. One at a time. As we always start the episode with, except for now. But now we're starting it again. Let's reverse. Kung Fu Panda, the first major release this weekend, came out on top in Dethrone Dune Part 2. Kung Fu Panda 4, Kung Anthony. Fu Panda 4. Don't four. forget it. Don't, yeah. don't miss out. On Kung Fu Panda 4, which is getting great word of mouth from fans. Opened with $52 million opening weekend, the second biggest opening for the film franchise, showing that this franchise still has some paws. <laughs> Get it? Has some legs, has some paws. We are going to fire Anthony from the show <laughs> right now. He's fired. Who wants to fill Anthony's seat in? But in second place, we have, of course, Dune Part 2. I'm surprised it got dethroned, but also it's Kung Fu Panda. Massive, massive fan base. People so, love yeah, that trilogy. Animated sequels to IPs, they always do well. Yeah, but Doom Part 2 still did very well with $44 million at the domestic box office. It brought its total in just, what, 10 days to $22, $222 million globally. It's already outgrossed Dune Part 1's domestic U.S. total in only seven days. Keep in mind, Dune Part 1 was a day... Uh, streaming day day in theater release. Streaming in theaters at the same time. It still made over yeah. $400 million at the yes. box office. But keep in mind, a lot of people watched it at home because they think, didn't want to leave the I house. I think Dune Part 2 is yeah. going to break $600 million. I'm calling it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Calling it. I mean, Wonka broke $600 million absolutely. In, in, in Dune Part 2 open well. And this is only a 47% drop second weekend from its $82 million first weekend. 47% is great. That's really healthy. Anything Plus, under 60%. I'm going to go back and see it. I saw it for free twice, but I'm definitely going to finally pay to see it and do Warner Part Brothers didn't get any of our money. Yeah. <laughs> Warner Brothers never gets our money. <laughs> but we uh, we help them get money. It's no big deal. Yeah, we help them get money. <laughs> no big deal. And I expect Doom Part 2 with this word of melt to actually overtake Kung Fu Panda next week, but we'll see. We will see. I, I, I can see that happening in the, because there's not really much new coming out. Yeah, I mean, speaking of other new releases, uh, Blumhouse's Imaginary opened with a pretty lackluster $9 million. Still, it's I wouldn't a, call a, that lackluster. Okay, I mean, when they make it, it for like $100,000. <laughs> it looks like, like it. <laughs> like, there's no way they spent a lot of money on Imaginary. So if you think about it, that's actually a great box office, Anthony. I don't know. I think they want more than let's that. Let's check the box. No, yeah, let's yeah. check the budget. Are you gonna Are you going to see this one? Am I going to see Imaginary? No, yeah. no, I'm not going to see it. Because, I, like I've already said... I, I know what um hold on let me look up the budget let me do one thing at a I'm time. I'm gonna guess Imaginary's budget was four mil, ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Okay. It already matches budget. It's gonna yeah. be a profitable film. Profitable film. So it's actually a pretty good box office. And then Cabrini, which is another new release, came in fourth place this weekend with eight million dollars. And then One Love, the Bob Marley biopic, is finally losing a bit of its steam. It had a very strong first three weeks of release. It's uh, finishing up at four point five million this weekend, and it's also gonna be available on streaming next week. Very successful film for them. Cabrini, I heard about this movie, and I saw a movie critic say it's as good as The Godfather, and I was just like, <laughs> "Come on, guys, what are we doing here? Did you get, like how much did you get paid for that? <laughs> What's it about? I believe it's um, sort of a Mother Teresa figure. Oh, okay, something like that. I can't remember who who it's about. How can you even compare that to The Godfather then? I watched the trailer. It looks really nice, but I'm like, this is. It looks nice. It's yeah. not the yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What are we doing? What are we doing? Our role, guys. What are everybody, we doing these days? Everybody needs to chill out with their reactions. You can Pain. have a very good movie without having reaction. to say it's better than The Godfather. 
I was just like, what are you? And you're a movie critic? <laughs> what are you getting paid right now? You're probably getting paid. <laughs> Gotta get those headline clicks, bro. Gotta get the headline clicks. Mm-hmm. Now, as I said earlier, there are a bunch of new releases on streaming. Uh, da- Damsel and Gentlemen debuted on Netflix. Pretty good numbers. All of us strangers. Poor things. I will say I saw a headline for Damsel today that pissed me off. What was that? I think it was from Variety. And it said, Damsel makes Rambo look soft. <laughs> Wow! I'm like, it's Ra- Rambo. What is what is that headline? How does that make Rambo look soft? What? Couldn't Rambo is the hardest g- guy who ever lived. For real, in it terms really of movie is. characters, the most badass guy Holy ever shit. was. Green Beret. Oh my god! Couldn't Jesus. believe it. Come on, I'm sure I'm sure Millie Bobby Brown's great. She's a fantastic actor. It's not getting great uh, reviews from audiences. It's only a 2.8 on Letterbox right now. It's pretty bad. So people are saying it's not very good. I can now see why they they pushed this film back uh, a few months. Hulu has released. A bunch of films that came out last year, if you didn't get a chance to see them, All of Us Strangers, which got only limited release, so you can see that on Hulu, as well as Poor Things, so Disney bought up the rights to Poor Things distribution. You can see it on Hulu, as well as Next Goal Wins. On Prime... Well, di- Poor Things was a, it's 20th Century Studios. It's a Disney movie. Did 20th Century make it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a Disney movie, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a Disney movie. Yeah, they funded that. It's a family-friendly film. <laughs> 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 That's why they did 20th Century Incredibles, Studios. poor things. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Prime released Ricky Stenicki. It's new major release uh, from Peter Farley, director and writer. It's getting pretty good reviews. I know some people who have said it's hilarious and some people who said it was awful. So It's a comedy starring Zac Efron yes. and John Cena. Yes, it does star them. Well, I'm just giving people background. They, you don't they have to do be, star you don't have to be sarcastic about it, Anthony. You're just naming movies that people maybe don't know about. And I'm just giving them a little context about the film. Thanks for the context. You're welcome. I don't appreciate the sarcasm over there. <laughs> Moving on. I hope so. Also available on Prime, Anatomy of a Fall. You can rent it for six bucks if you didn't get to see it in theaters. Recommend renting that. Or Occupied City from Steve McQueen. Oh, yeah, that's a right. Really great documentary that uh, got great reviews. And then on Max Wonka is now available on the platform, as well as Aquaman and the Lost... Last Lost Kingdom. Lost. Lost. <laughs> it's the last Aquaman. <laughs> it's, it's a lost movie. It is the last kingdom. Say, I recommend watching Wonka. Yeah. Wonka's delightful. There's chocolate. Then there's chocolate. Jesus, he says that every day. He says it every fucking day. Every goddamn day. I fucking love Wonka. I don't say it every day. You say it every day. I haven't seen you in a week. I'm sure you're saying it on the days I didn't see you. That's not true at all. Sure you did. I'm just you brought Wonka. I gotta sing the chocolate song. Moving on to the top stories this week. As we said early in the op- episode, the Oscars are today. You can Woo! you can watch the Oscars on ABC or any other platform connected with ABC, like Hulu has an ABC package. So Jimmy Kimmel will be hosting for the fifth time this year. Ryan Gosling is definitely going to be performing I'm Just Ken, as well as all the other Oscar nominated songs from a bunch of great performers. And for the first time since 2009, all of the winners for acting last year will be presenting the same categories. I thought they normally do that. They do it sometimes. That Last year, there were two of them, but they're doing every acting category. The former winners from last year will be presenting. Gotcha. I thought It's a head, tradition that used to Yeah, it used happen. to be every year. It's an annual thing. Uh, they stopped doing it for all of them. Um, but now, this year, everyone who won last year will be presenting. I think it's a really cool tradition. Same. I think it should always happen. Yeah. And we usually do an Oscars watch party on Discord with... The Discorders. However, we are going to be going to an uh, Oscars event, so we'll be there today at 3.30, and we can't watch it with y'all. We are presenting the Oscar for Best Picture. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 so, you, you spoil the news. <laughs> Anthony, it's supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> Raiders of Lost Podcast will be presenting Best Picture at the Academy <laughs> we, Awards. We'll step out, and everyone will be like, who the fuck are these guys? Are they? <laughs> like four people will be like, oh, I know those guys. <laughs> I've seen them on TikTok. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I can't wait to present it to Chris Nolan. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's going to be a fun event. It looks like it. And uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to share it with our Discorders. But unfortunately, they maybe. will. They Anyone who's using our Discord regularly, there will still be a watch party for it. Yeah, it will be going down. Yes, no it's matter happening. What. Now, let's get into some more news. So we had a couple of new images released from some upcoming films. One of them a reboot and one of them a sequel. So the first one was the first image revealed of Jared Leto in Tron Ares, the sequel to Tron Legacy. And he is, it looks like he's Tron. And also it's got the red light. So you think he's Tron? It looks like it. it looks like he's Rinsler. He's like in the Rinsler suit. I guess yeah, yeah. I guess it was. It looks like a yeah. Tron Rinsler suit. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that's an interesting take to have him play Tron. 
I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Depends yeah. on what the story is. As well as we got an image of Bill Skarsgård from the Crow reboot. They which actually I had, released three images, James. I have four. mixed feelings about because first of all, okay, does it look like Joker or what? Which Joker? Jared Leto. Jared Leto's Joker looks quite a bit like Jared Leto's yeah. Joker. I, I don't love. I don't love the design of the character. I, and you recently watched the Crow? Yeah, the Crow's awesome. Yeah. There's just that movie. I think it's a movie that. If they do it well, it can be a good reboot. Mm -hmm. However, I just don't have a ton of faith in studios rebooting right now. I think it's a hit or miss situation usually. The Crow is something that's so unique and original, the the first film, and the tone is so special. I feel like if they try to reboot it, if they're going to try to stay true to the original Crow, they'll fail, they'll miss. Because in, in that movie, he's like ripping electric guitar on top of buildings and in graveyards, and it works. It's sick. It's excellent. And it has an aesthetic of a different world. Mm. I feel like a reboot could go really well or just really poorly with this movie. Sure. But I'm excited because Bill Skarsgård's awesome. Again, I don't love the design of the character. It just gave me, like I said, like you said, Jared Leto Joker vibes. Mm -hmm. And sort of just rapper fuckboy haircut. It does have it's a fuckboy like, boy look. It's yeah. sort of just like buzzed on some sides and like the, the bangs. But it's Bill Skarsgård. He's an awesome actor. It's a it's a reboot that's been in the works for years now. Yeah. It's inevitable. We're going to get reboots. But then Tron Aries, I think it's really cool still. It looks awesome. Now, and the director of The Crow re reboot is actually Snow White and the director, director Rupert Sanders. Snow White and the director? Snow White and the Huntsman director. <laughs> I was like, which, which Snow White movie was that? And Ghost in the Shell director, uh, Rupert Sanders. He's a good director. He's solid. He's he's he can get the job done. Um, he's got a lot of experience with big budget uh, films, so we'll see. I just don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do with this movie. We'll find out. We'll probably get a teaser trailer very soon. But again, I'm not. I, I mean, when I saw that image, I was like, is it just reminded me immediately of Jared Leto's Joker, who I think it's a bit of a bad rap for that Joker, but it's just that it was utilized poorly. The character in that movie. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, it should have just been Joker's the villain. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we could... Versus just torturing some guy in a room and driving a purple Lamborghini. <laughs> That's all he was. He was just there for fodder. Un it had nothing to do with the plot. Not really. Yeah. He showed up with a helicopter. Not really. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing really. All right, next up. Shogun, the new samurai TV series on FX and Hulu, became a huge success, beating The Bear as their most watched new TV show. However, it will not return for a second season because this is an adaptation of a novel... And they ended the, the series uh, just how the book ended, and the creators don't want to pursue the story any further. And, yeah, uh, and Sonata actually was a producer on this. Uh, it, they released, I'm not sure if you saw this, a really great behind-the-scenes documentary of following um, Hiro Sonata on set for a day as both actor and producer. And it just looked like, looked like so, much, so much fun to be under the direction and leadership of someone like him. I want to watch this ASAP because of how great the reactions are. And I'm a simple man. I see Hiroki... Hiroki Sonata in a movie or a show. I'm going to watch it. Going to watch the hell out of it. I'm going to watch it. Sonata's a goat. He's a legend. It looks awesome, and it's supposed to be an incredible spectacle. Spectacle. But yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, uh, it broke the bear for most watched TV show for Hulu. The bear. Why don't you get into uh, some Dune Part 3 news, James? Oh, sure. So. I had a feeling you'd like to talk about obviously it. Obviously, the sequel's a success. Do you have a hair clip on your shirt? Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was using that earlier. <laughs> obviously, we all know Dune Part 2 was a hit. It's a success right now. And everyone's wondering, are they going to greenlight Dune 3, Dune Part 3? Dune and Messiah? So Dune Messiah, which is the second book written by Frank Herbert in the franchise, would be the third film in Denis Villeneuve's trilogy. And he's been on record many times saying that it would be his dream to make the trilogy of what he's wanted to do. But And he said the script's almost done. They've been writing it. Mm -hmm. It's almost there. And to quote him, he said, I don't know exactly when I will go back to Arrakis. I, may, I might make a detour before... Just to go away from the sun, from my mental sanity, I might do something in between. But my dream would be to go a last time on this planet that I love, which makes sense to me because there is a time jump. And so it's better for the actors to age a little bit more. Mm -hmm. As well as he's been working in the Dune world since 2018. As soon as he finished Blade Runner 2049, he was in pre-production development of Dune Part 1, just Dune. So yeah. he's been doing it since 2018. He's been doing it. He's been doing for 2018. <laughs> he's been doing it for 20, <laughs> since 2018. And he's one of the most exciting filmmakers alive. And I think it's not too much to ask for him 
him personally. To, I, I want to take a break. I want to do something else. Then I'll come back to doing and do another film in Arrakis. I think it's, yeah. that's what the, it's going to happen. He's also he's circling. There's a new science fiction project we talked about a few weeks ago that he's circling. Um, that takes place on a, in a like a space station. Yeah, yeah. So I would be excited to see him do another science fiction film. I think he should take a break because I think yeah. we need that time period for the time lapse. We need Timmy and Zendaya to get a little older. Yeah. For the characters for the time lapse, I think that'll be really effective. But obviously, they're gonna make a third film. He left it as a cliffhanger at the end of the movie. Really, you know, the last shot is Chani about to jump on a sandworm. I mean, obviously, it's going somewhere. Yeah. That's not the end. You don't end. Like two movies like that. That's not an ending to the story. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's Especially setup. people who haven't yeah. read the books. Yeah. They don't know how the story really ends or how it continues going forward. So I guarantee, and I'll put money down, that Dune Part 3 will happen. And I think it will be called Dune Messiah based off the book. As well as I think that Denis will make a movie before that. Yeah. I think it's great if he makes another movie before it. Me too. Yeah. You need a, a palate cleanser. Because yeah. like you said, even though Dune came out in 2021, he started working on it three years before that. So he's been working in the Dune world for a very, very long time. Probably needs a break from deserts. Yeah, <laughs> needs a break. He's just sick of Timmy. He's <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just super dehydrated, man. <laughs> he's like really thirsty. He's just sick of wearing a still suit all the time. <laughs> Imagine if he directed in a still suit. That he could actually operating one. <laughs> if I if I was making dude, I'd request a still suit. <laughs> oh my god. All right, there is a new movie that just premiered at South by Southwest Festival as the opening night film. Oh, this was the opener? Roadhouse from Doug Lyman, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. This is getting a ton of fantastic reactions online from those who are in the audience of the packed opening night crowd. People are saying it is a fun, action-packed, and overall blast of a good time. It's an old-school style action movie like the ones from the 80s. And so people were saying it just like feels like that nostalgic 80s vibe, which I we grew up watching those movies. Hell yeah. Sign me the hell up. Doug Lyman did actually attend the premiere of the film. We mentioned earlier two weeks ago that he was uh, boycotting the film's premiere. That's right. He did change his mind. I'm sure that uh, Amazon maybe said something to him. We'll see. However, there still is no theatrical release set. This film comes out in uh, less than two weeks on Amazon Prime. That's silly, man. People are saying that Jake is absolutely fantastic and Conor McGregor is great in his acting debut. I'm so bummed because I forgot this was only getting an Amazon yeah. release. A lot of people's reactions were saying that this deserves to be in theaters. That's like it's like that big fun movie that like seeing it on a small screen is not gonna be I just don't not understand be... the move. I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't know, man. They better put it in theaters, at least for like a limited release. Like, why not? People wanna see this. I want to see it in theaters. Yeah, me too. I want to see Jake Gyllenhaal shredded in a theater. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to watch that on my TV screen. If I'm going to see, you want to see those pick those pecs on the I'm big screen. If I'm going to see Jake Gyllenhaal with 12 abs, I want it to be in a movie theater. I don't know why would I watch that on my TV screen. Why Amazon? What the fuck? He doesn't. He doesn't get in that good of a shape to watch on TV. You got to see those pecs on I, IMAX, man. Come IMAX on, man. pecs. Self <laughs> A theatrical release was, IMAX was apps. epic, yeah. <laughs> There's also been a list of the highest paid actors of 2023. The top 10 is rife with a lot of familiar faces. To round out the list, starting from 10 to 1, we have Denzel Washington, who that, made $24 million in 2023 thanks to the Equalizer. Equalizer 3 money, man. Got it, man. Ben Affleck came in in ninth place with $38 million. Jason Statham. Tied for eighth place with $41 million. The beekeeper. He tied with Leonardo DiCaprio with $41 million this year. Uh, Jennifer Aniston came in seventh place, sixth place, I'm sorry, with $42 million. Matt Damon and Ryan Gosling tied for the next spot of fourth place with $43 million. That's that air money. They, him and Ben got a $20 million check just oh, yeah. to make that movie. Oh, yeah. For and Amazon. then um, Matt Damon's other movie paid him uh, a cool $20 million too. Um, Amazon pays really Oppenheimer. well. Yeah, he probably got. A, he, I guarantee Oppenheimer. He probably got five mil up front, but then he got a nice back end. Probably like, got some back yeah. end. But yeah, he got yeah. twenty up front just to do yeah to do air. air. Uh, Ryan Gosling obviously made a ton of money with uh, Barbie. Uh, Tom Cruise, uh, with his one release, made forty five million dollars as a producer of the Mission Impossible franchise. He gets a back end cut. Margot Robbie made a massive of fifty nine million dollars in 2023. Holy crap. Also being the producer of her film Barbie like Tom Cruise, she ended up making a very good back end percentage. And then Adam Sandler came out on top. I think for like the fifth time in the last decade, 
with $73 million earned this past year thanks to his Netflix films. Insane. And just crushing it. Absolutely destroying it. $73 million. Dollars. But still, Margot Robbie pulling $59 million, That's and she's, what, like 31 years old? Uh, she's our age. Is she? Yeah. Or maybe she might be 31. This makes me feel like i um, done nothing with my life. I think she's our age. She might Margot be Margot Robbie baby. is 33. Holy so, shit, yeah, she 90, is. Yeah, 90, baby. And look at us. <laughs> She made $59 million more than us last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not us, man. Not us. Not us, man. Speaking of salaries, it was released that Christopher Nolan earned a very cool $72 million from Oppenheimer, having a 15% back end with his deal with Universal to make the film. He made so much money. <laughs> so much money. <laughs> And then um, I'm sure he's also got a back end for streaming numbers as well. 100 percent in, uh, in re- rentals, rentals, yeah, for sure. So he's gonna make a he's gonna make at least 100 million in total from that film in, over the next couple of years. He, I feel like he makes 100 million off all of his movies. Well, his previous deals with Warner Brothers were 10 percent um, back ends, and then Universal, just because he had so much fucking sway. I'm sure his deal was like, I want to be 15%, yeah. baby. Nolan went into that meeting. He put his giant dick on the table. <laughs> he's like, I want 15, 15 million, 15 percent. <laughs> Take or leave it, Universal. <laughs> That's right, baby. You want this? <laughs> Push it in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> they helicoptered it in on a crane. Fifteen <laughs> percent. Give me that Nolan money. <laughs> oh my All god! Right, let's move on. <laughs> We got some news about. <laughs> I think I broke Anthony. You good, bro? Yeah. All right. We got some news and kind of an update on Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Well, beyond the Spider Verse. Yeah, beyond the Spider Verse. Where we got two logo teases. We got Miles Morales' logo as well as, well as Miles G. Morales' logo and official posts of the X of both versions of the character. There, so, yeah, official posts on X. On X. Yeah. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, on X. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the different realities of Miles in their logos as characters. Oh, yeah. So we have the Spider-Man one and that as well as the other one. Well, perfectly said. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't think I did say it perfectly well, but I did my yeah. best. It's so weird that Twitter's called X now. I've read that. I'm like, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Let's move on to some Killing Murphy news. And it was it was posted on the Across the Spider-Verse X page and then on their Instagram page as well. Copy. So it's another. It's just a little tease. Like, hey guys, I know we said it was coming out this month, but don't here's forget, your photo. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we said it's coming out today? Uh, it's just a photo today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the movie. <laughs> this is beyond the Spider Verse. <laughs> it's not quite ready yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, next up, there's been a lot of rumors online of Killian Murphy possibly being the choice to play the next James Bond. Pierce Brosnan. In, in an interview, said that if he was going to pick someone to play James Bond, he would pick Killian Murphy. I don't. I don't think Killian would be a good Bond. I mean, he could be. I think he could. I think Killian Murphy is one of the best actors alive, but I just don't think he fits James Bond. Hmm. Maybe. I just don't. I don't. You think, think he'd be better as a villain? Oh, absolutely. Bond villain. I'd love to see him as a Bond villain or as Bond. It's like he didn't fit Batman. Yeah. Yeah, but. Bond isn't screaming in a gravelly voice. I'm oh, Batman. I'm no, James but, Bond. But that's the thing. He didn't do that in his Batman audition. I'm just saying, like, he yeah. didn't fit the Batman role. Yeah. Because I don't think he fits that kind of character in terms of being... An action hero? An, yeah, an action hero. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He uh, he has... I mean, he's never really played action outside of uh, Free Fire. There's a little bit of shooting that yeah, he Free does. Yeah, Free Fire, a little bit, a little bit on a little Red bit, Eye, a little, a little bit in, in 20 Days Later, the ending, sure. Yeah. But uh, he busts some heads in twenty. Yeah, he days does. Later. A, he does bust yeah. some heads in twenty eight, eight days later, with a pipe. But <laughs> I don't. I don't think that he would be a like. A, I'm obviously he'd be great, but I, I don't think he fits Bond. So James, why do you hate Killian Murphy? <laughs> He's just too good. He's better than me. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we get it, man. We get it. He's 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 better than me, man. <laughs> no, I just, I just think he doesn't doesn't fit that kind of role. Understandable. He is old for Bond. Yeah, he's got to be like fifty years old. He is old. Right, let me. Ha, Killian's got to be in his late forties. Forty eight, maybe. Killian Murphy, age thirty two. <laughs> Killian Murphy is seventy nine years old. <laughs> he looks great. Forty seven. Forty seven. Forty seven years old. That's a bit old to start. It's a bit old to start as Bond. A bit old to start. Unless you have an older Bond, but I just. 
because they want to do a younger Bond. So yeah, I think this is just a rumor that it's just it's nothing. It's just hype. I think he could be a super interesting Bond villain. Sure, I think he'd be great. Yeah, but not Bond. Okay, we got some Superman legacy news. So now the film, the first film of the DCU, has been changed for its title to just Superman. Drop the legacy. It's cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of makes sense. Yeah. There hasn't I mean, been a movie not? called Superman since the first one. That's true. I, yeah. I think that kind of makes wow. sense. You know your stuff. Like, <laughs> you, you know what you're talking about, man. Live action. Um, and also, Wendell Pierce has been tapped to play Perry White. Wendell Pierce, you might know from The Wire Kid. Fuck yeah. He's one of the detectives. I always liked Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he was great. He was a good Perry White. Yeah. But um, yeah, Superman Legacy is just called Superman now. Yeah, why not? Which why, makes why sense. Not? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get into Makes some sense. movie trailers. Ooh, yeah. A couple of great some... ones, a couple of eh ones. First up, we have a Netflix trailer for Parasite the Grey, which is based on a popular manga series. It looks really cool. It's like a sci-fi, uh, horror-ish, uh, body, Invasion of the Body Snatchers type uh, story. South Korean, correct? Yeah, South Korean. It's about this uh, alien parasites that descend upon Earth and start invading the population, disguising themselves as humans. Uh, while slowly taking over the entire population. Very cool. Yeah, it looks pretty fun. It looks the, really the interesting. Look awesome. Yeah. And the director of Train to Busan made it. Correct, Amunda. Sure did. Man, that's why you get paid the big bucks. Not the Margot Robbie Not big the bucks. Not the $59 million a year. But you, you zero get, million dollars yeah, a year. Yeah, zero millions. You, make, you have zero millions. I'm very lucky and grateful yeah. for the zero millions. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Also, an adaptation of the very popular video game Fallout just dropped its first trailer, and it also looks like a lot of fun. I don't know anything about this game, but it looks like an interesting story. This is going to be coming out on Amazon Prime. Like I said, we've been saying video games are going to just be exploding into film and TV after the popularity of a few of the recent successful films. And this looks like a fun trailer. Walton Goggins, one of my favorite actors, uh, plays a lead character, so I'm going to watch him. My second favorite civil engineer. My second, my second favorite civil engineer. <laughs> Next up, uh, my favorite trailer of the week by far is... The Bike Riders from director Jeff Nichols, starring Austin Butler, Tom Hardy, and Jodie Comer. This looks like a fucking flat-out fantastic movie. It looks like a classic. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a classic. The kind of movies that like you grow up on, these really cool like epic stories uh, about this subset community, uh, you know, immersing you into the world of like this little culture, this little bubble. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun to see uh, a story telling the, the evolution of biker gangs. And the cast looks phenomenal. The Re first trailer was good, but it didn't have the bite that this one has. Yeah. This trailer slapped. Yeah. I saw it for the first time in a theater mm -hmm. a week and a half ago. It looks awesome. Yeah, it looks, it looks really fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see this. I think this is just so... I think Jeff Nichols is one of the like unheralded great directors in America right now. and Because he makes smaller movies, I think he's just a really fabulous filmmaker. Always telling stories of like in Southern America. Uh, in really cool ways and varying his his genres, which each one he's done a small scale, he's done sci-fi, and now he's doing an epic like this. It looks like just well, could be his best film as well. Check out Take Shelter if you haven't seen it. Take Shelter is yeah. terrific. There's a storm coming, <laughs> and ain't none of you is prepared. <laughs> That's my uh, Michael Shannon impression from I, Take Shelter. And just throw the table over now. <laughs> well, I don't think my computer would like that. We also got a trailer for Inside Out 2. Have not seen the first one, but... Yeah, so Inside Out 2, yeah. uh, the little girl is now a hockey player, and she's uh, 14 years old. And it looks like twice as many personalities and emotions are joining the uh, the set of five that we are familiar with. Looks like a lot of fun. Ayo Debery and Maya Hawk join the cast, as well as a few other voice actors. Uh, and it just looks like fans of the film, the original, are super excited for this. It's Ayo Debery. Sorry, Ayo Debery. You're going to make me flip this table. There's a storm I, coming! Io listens to our show, man. Io does listen we, to our we show. We heard she... Well, maybe not consistently, but we heard she's listened before. She has heard of us. She has heard of us. She heard. She heard. Through the grapevine. Yep. All right. We also got a trailer for A Gentleman in Moscow, which yes. I did not watch. Was Would you like me to summarize this? Please summarize it. <laughs> I could see a look of a blank stare. It was not a Help look Help of... me. No, it was... Describe this trailer, Anthony. I didn't watch it. I was just setting you up, man. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm, I'm your hype man. <laughs> this is a mini series. Uh, starring Ewan McGregor, about a pa expatriate who is stranded uh, in a hotel in Moscow, uh, and the government of Moscow is uh, keeping him trapped there, basically, as uh, an enemy of the state. And so he has to ba basically live out the rest of his days in a hotel. 
kind of like the terminal. So he's American, not American. So he's a he's he's a Russian. He's a Russian patriot, yeah, expatriate. Yeah, copy. And they're like super pissed at him. So they're like, you have to stay in this hotel. <laughs> super, we're really <laughs> pissed at you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you have to stay in this hotel. Sounds Russian. He's, he's got a great mustache, and he befriends like a, another girl who's in the same position as him. Not another girl that he's a girl, but like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> he befriends a girl who's also in the same position as him, trapped there, unable to leave. And so they're trying to figure out, like, how do we first spend our time since we have nothing to do forever in this hotel? And then how do we get out? Look, It's a very charming, like, uh, dark comedy. Very comedic. Doesn't sound charming. <laughs> it's, it's funnier than it sounds. It doesn't sound charming it's, at all. It's made in, the, in the, like, the tone of, like, Wes Anderson. It sounds it's terribly dark. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of terribly dark, we have... Well, uh, the Boston came out of you right now. <laughs> yeah, Speaking of terribly dark. <laughs> uh, we, we smoked a cigarette for that fucking, one word. <laughs> what do you have the fucking next trailer? We got fucking The Idea of You, which looks like... A, I love a rob cop, but this does not look like a good rob cop. Starring Ed Hathaway. Um, oh my God, I saw this trailer. She, is, uh, she plays uh, a single mom who hooks up with... She's an art curator. Art curator. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, single mom art curator who hooks up with the lead singer of a famous band that she met at Coachella. Uh, they had like a one night stand or something, and then uh, they he finds her and they begin a relationship. And she's like, "You're too old for me." And then the trailer ends. <laughs> it looks pretty fucking bad. It looked awful. It looked awful. Look, it looks like honestly, it looks like. One of those like what do you call it? like the other channel the cheesy rom coms that channel that plays those ones like uh, Hallmark Channel movies. Sure, yeah. It looks like that, but with just like Anne Hathaway in it. Yeah. And I mean, I love rom coms, but this does not look like a good one. It seems like an AI script. Yeah. It does seem like an AI seems script. Like an AI script. He's like ChatGPT. Write me a rom com about Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> like so, his the setup is like he was playing at Coachella and he ran into her before her his set, and like they had like a little romantic thing. He's like, okay, I gotta go perform she's like oh he's like yeah i'm the lead singer of the band she's like oh my god and then like a month later he finds her at her art shop he's like I i'm not sure if you remember me we met at coachella obviously she's gonna remember you <laughs> <laughs> how would she not remember hooking up with like the lead harry band? styles <laughs> oh i think i think i would remember you ha ha what is it styles <laughs> exactly that's basically the the character the character yeah. it's like how obviously she's gonna remember you bro I was like, who, who wrote this? Anne Hathaway studied Olivia Wilde to play this role. <laughs> <laughs> Boom roasted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Did you know, like Florence Pugh was like helping direct that movie? Was helping direct what? Don't worry, darling. I heard a lot of rumors yeah. about that movie. <laughs> Fucking amen. <laughs> also, right. the final trailer. Harry, how much Harry get... spit. On my man, Chris Pine. He spat on Chris Pine. He spat Chris on Pine man. is just too good of a guy to, to continue it. He got I spat analyzed on. that video. He got spat on. A thousand times. He got spat on. People who said he didn't get spat on, open your fucking eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, he got spat on. Spit, spit, spit. Team Chris Pine. Hashtag. All day. Oh, absolutely. All day. All day, all night. Those baby blues, come on. My man. Fuck her up with those lips. Then I saw. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you want to see, see those lips at theaters? He's got, he's got good lips. You want to see those lips at theaters? He's got good lips. IMAX lips. I'm like, if he's on an IMAX movie, those are some good lips. <laughs> Moving on to, I saw the TV glow. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> sexualizing men in every episode. <laughs> That's what we do. Film boys. Uh, I saw Film the, boys. I saw the TV glow. Uh, another trailer for a horror. Is this a film or a TV series? Film. Horror film. Very trippy vibes. Very colorful. Very '90s aesthetic as well. Yeah, man. This is a it coming felt like out a '90s co horror coming TV from A24, and it's, it's hard to make out what the story is about, but it involves televisions. It gave me like Ring vibes, but with like a neon '90s twist. Yeah, it feels like if you went to a blockbuster and you were being hunted <laughs> by a TV. <laughs> 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 I'm hitting Anthony right in the funny bone today. <laughs> what the fuck? I know it makes no sense. Oh my god. <laughs> we got some more news. So Ben Affleck made that movie The Accountant like ten years ago. <laughs> That's accurate sentence. <laughs> accurate like ten yeah, it's an accurate sentence. <laughs> ben Affleck made that movie The Accountant like ten years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was like it was like twenty fourteen. Um and it's been snagged up by Amazon MGM for a sequel to it, also starring John Bernthal. I don't think Anna Kendrick will be back though. Why not? There's no news about it yet. They're keeping it under wraps, man. 
She's the accountant now. <laughs> but it's an awesome. It's a cool movie. It's a great uh, Hitman movie. Check it out if you haven't seen The Accountant. It's a cool. He's a cool dude. Ben Affleck. He crunches those numbers. <laughs> he looks good in glasses too. <laughs> and he does. When was the last time you like Ben Affleck? Seldom has worn glasses on, in film. I would say just that movie. I think so. Maybe. I think just so. that movie. Just one time. He never did again. Matt wears glasses a lot. He's he's worn glasses a few times. Yeah. Yeah. And he wears a Burma life a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The Good Shepherd mm-hmm. wears glasses the whole time. He wears them as optometrist. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> reading S- some Austin Butler news in an interview. He said that he was uh, for his performance as Fade Rautha in Dune Part Two. He was inspired by Gary Oldman and Heath Ledger. Um, not surprising to hear because um, those are two of the best actors of all time who have delivered incredible villain performances. Obviously, uh, Gary Oldman, I think his best villain performance is in Leon, and then Heath Ledger was wonderful as a villain in Brokeback Mountain. I'm just kidding. <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a villain. Jack Twist is more of a villain. Jack, yeah, yeah Jack was like being very forceful. Um, well, in a way, Lu- uh, no. Well, the thing he was a villain to himself. Ennis is a villain to himself. He never. He's not he, a villain. He, he wouldn't let. No, I know. But he's his, his own. His emotions he's a, yeah. are his villain. He's his own antagonist. Yeah. He never let himself. Yeah. Become. He never let himself open up. The and world's be free. the villain in that yeah. film because yeah. the world doesn't accept him, and so he doesn't accept himself. Anthony. Yeah, I know. It's just a joke. We actually did a great episode in Brokeback Mountain. One of our best. Yeah, I think it's it's One a terrific episode. It's a really sensational movie. I will I will die on this hill. Brokeback Mountain's top five movie of the century. It's a good my take. opinion. It's a good take. Brokeback Mountain, one of the best films this century. So I, I I absolutely think I so. I respect that. Yeah, it is an insanely. Good I would movie. I would put it in the top five tw- of the twenty first century. Top twenty for sure. Yeah, top twenty for sure. It's that good. It's that opinion. good. Oh man, now I'm gonna start crying. I know I'm getting I'm sad. Thinking about the the, the it shirt. could be the greatest tragedy ever put on film. It could be. Maybe. Maybe. Could be. It's up there. It's up there. For show. Sure. Freddie got fingered. It's up there, too. <laughs> oh Why would you say that one? Because <laughs> it's the most outrageous thing I could think of. <laughs> but anyone doesn't know, that's a movie that, uh, what's his name? Something Green? Um, no, it's Tom, Tom Green. Tom Green, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tom Green yeah. made. Yeah. <laughs> it's considered the, work, the worst movie ever made. He was hot for a while. Yeah, for like a he year. was on fu- like he was getting deals like crazy. He was making yeah. a bunch of movies and TV. What happened to him? Just, his, his movies just bombed. Yeah, but he, he had a lot of deals. He made a bunch of movies and TV shows. That's true. Uh, Chad Stahelski, obviously director of John Wick, has signed a first look production deal with Lionsgate, and obviously the rumors are circling him doing a Ghost of Tsushima film. I think that's what we've been hearing mostly, right? Most recently, it's not rumors. He signed on. It's just they haven't begun production yet. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of time. But does it say how many movies he signed with? It Lions does not Gate? say. It's probably just uh, like, uh, for five years. Probably like a couple movies. Yeah, then. yeah. Pretty cool. Smart. It's a cool guy. He helped build Lionsgate the last ten years. Really beefed it up. Lionsgate. So in the two thousands, they they co teamed with Warner Brothers. Yeah. And so they did like uh, three hundred, a couple of Zack Snyder films. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla movie. Yeah, they yeah, did three hundred was massive. They were dude. paired up with Warner Brothers for I think ten years making movies. I think Lionsgate's always been a very strong studio. Sure. They've always been great. Sure. They, they put Absolutely. out consistently good content. Totally agree. All right, next up, some more Dune Part 2 news. Timothy Chalamet talked about his upcoming Bob Dylan biopic, which he's making with uh, James, Mangold. James Mangold. And he said that he would love it if Austin Butler's Elvis would show up in the film. Dude, that'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be fucking great? That'd be awesome. Just Holy a cameo shit. in the background or something? Yeah. Hey, Bob, how you doing? That was a terrible Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like De Niro. No, you sound like Paul McCartney. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul. <laughs> All right, uh, Dakota Johnson. Obviously, she was in Madam Web. She's getting some blowback because she's been talking smack about this movie. She said, <laughs> I'll never do anything like this again. And what else did she say? It was definitely an experience for me to make that movie. I had never done anything like it before. I probably will never do anything like that again because I don't make it, I don't make sense in that world. And I know that now, but sometimes in this industry, you sign on to something, and it's one thing, and then as you're making it, it becomes a completely different thing, and you're like, wait, what? But it was a real learning experience, and of course, it's not nice to be part of something that's ripped to shreds, but I can't say that I don't understand. But also, you know, it's a good paycheck as well. But I do, I, I saw her talking about how she signed on to a script where it was more of a Terminator feel, she said, and she would, the plot was her saving 
Peter Parker as a baby. Uh -huh. That was like the plot of the film, but it completely changed when they went into production and the script got rewritten. <laughs> I wonder why they would change it. <clears throat> because Chat GPT got a better idea. <laughs> 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 that's a good one that was a good one <laughs> hold on hold on Sony what if what if they're really good at math and stuff <laughs> I mean yeah ultimately I don't think the movie rests upon her responsibility for being good it depends on the story oh yeah sorry and, and, yeah, and, and, it, movie. and it just looks like it was just a bad bad script I'm probably never gonna watch this movie I have no interest in it yeah me neither yeah but me neither. I'm sure she got paid, so that's fine. She got, she got, she got her money. I'm sure. Yeah, she, definitely, she probably got, yeah. got like five mil. Yeah, probably, probably more. I mean, you're leading a Sony movie. Yeah, she probably five million, you know, eighty million dollar budget. So she probably got oh, like yeah, five, true, five true. mil, probably something yeah, like that. True, which is pretty good. Did you see yeah. the salaries for the cast of Dune Part Two and Dune Part One? One and two, okay. Yeah. So, so um, let me guess. Can I guess? Yeah. So Dune Part Two, I'm guessing Timmy got two hundred k, and then for Dune Part Two, he probably got five mil. Dune Part Two, he got two million, mm -hmm. no three million, and then Dune Part One, he got one million, I believe. Mm -hmm. Then Zendaya, Zendaya made two million for Part Two, mm -hmm. a couple hundred thousand for Part One. Rebecca Ferguson, I think she made like five hundred thousand. The first one, Momoa made like three or four or five million. Brolin made, I think, three million. Mm -hmm. And people might be confused. Why did Timothy Chalamet only pull three million dollars for Dune Part Two? Because he probably signed a two picture deal, no. and he wasn't. The massive global superstar box office draw in 2020 when he signed that deal. Yeah. Versus now, I mean, he just made he made like 12 million dollars for Wonka, so that's where he's getting right now, like 12 to 15 million dollars. Yeah, I'm sure with Doom Isaiah, he'll make it. He'll make 10 mil probably. Yeah, probably. And I mean, this is very common in Hollywood. Even direct, even with characters that are in movies that are extremely successful in a franchise, the actors they are not getting paid as much as you might think they are. Yeah, but a lot of them also work percentage gross into their salaries at some point. I'm sure Timmy, I bet Timmy got 1% yeah, maybe. of gross maybe, uh, for part who two. Knows? Who knows? But I mean, he, he's, I mean he's made, he's done pretty well. He's going to have a, a successful okay. career. He's doing okay. But yeah, again, again, he pulled like 12 million for Wonka. So now he's <laughs> now he's pulling that. And then movie. someone like Momoa, the re, uh, he's highest paid actor in Dune 1. That's because he was the lead. He was Aquaman. And so when he probably was making 10 million as Aquaman in, in movies. And so when you when you hit a qu certain quota and level, it gives you bargaining power with your agent to be like, I'll be in this movie, but I have to make at I have to make five mil. He's a draw too, big draw. He's yeah. a draw. I know a lot of people that saw it because they love Momoa. Yeah. And then Brolin, Oscar nominee, pedigree, experience, reliable. Uh, everyone loves him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure Timmy signed a deal that if part two gets made, this is what he'll make. Yeah, exactly. That's why it was only like two or three million dollars. Yeah. I mean people I mean people are surprised sometimes, but like even like actors like Hemsworth and Downey, they made hardly anything in their first roles as the famous characters they played. I think Down Downey was five hundred thousand dollars in the 200. first two hundred thousand dollars in 200, Iron Man 000. one. Yeah. And then he gets twenty mil for the second one. Yeah. Then he makes fifty million every time they make a, an Avengers movie. I believe Hemsworth made hundred and fifty thousand in Thor. Yeah, probably something like that. And now he then he made like seventy million for Avengers Endgame. So it's just a matter of it's building blocks. That's what it is. They have to prove you. You have to prove your your blockbuster uh, power. You have to prove it. And when you when you are a draw, then you get the big bucks. But you have to earn yourself as you have to prove yourself as being a draw to audiences. Yeah. But it seems like it's a pretty you know that movie. It seemed like the salaries were pretty spread out pretty well. Yeah, you know when you have an ensemble like. You you can't have act you can't pay actors twenty million dollars. But that's a good studio. Well, obviously, yeah, it's an ensemble, but also they're not paying any actors twenty million dollars to eat up the entire budget, mm. and they can put the budget to things they want to do. Exactly. Like you want to be in this movie? All right. Well, we don't have to cast you. We can cast someone else. Okay, Five hundred thousand dollars. Take it or leave it. Then we can double the production designer's budget, and then we can double the cinematographer's budget, and we can. Well, not that. Just that. No. Then yeah. we can add better. Yeah, we yeah. can add more visual effects. Yeah. We add, we can take our time with visual effects. Totally, man. Yeah. yeah. They did it right. They did it the right way. This is what happens when you make films the right way. Yeah, that's one of the things about Hollywood, especially sports, right now. They're just getting actors are getting paid so much money. Yeah, so much money in some of these movies. Like when you're making thirty million dollars for a movie, up, holy up front. shit! Yeah, and the budget's a hundred million. It's like you're eating up a third of the budget. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. Yeah, unless it's like someone like Tom Cruise or Margot Robbie, where they're getting yeah, they're probably getting twenty mil up front, but then the rest of their pay paycheck they're making back end. 
You know? Yeah, and, the, and they're, make, they're yeah, making sure they're, the movie's going to be a success. Exactly. That, they're incentivized to make sure it's as best as it possibly can be. But like a streaming release, and yeah. you're paying your actors $50 million to be in it, and what, uh, maybe 500,000 people watch the movie? Yeah, exactly. Is that worth it? And what's different with Dune is, I guarantee you, Denis Villeneuve was the highest paid person on both those sets. He probably made 10 mil of both movies. Denis so, Villeneuve? Yeah. I doubt that. Yeah. Stu- big studio director, proved himself, 10 million per movie. Maybe. Guaranteed. Maybe. Guarantee you. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. 100%. Did you know that his wife is actually a second unit director? Yeah. She it's so a, cool. Yeah. She used to be a journalist. Yeah. It's, they met it's, on they met on Arrival, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, I think they met on Arrival. Uh-huh. And then she, yeah, so she's second unit on this one. She's also... Her name's Tanya Lapointe. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually, I just started following her on her Instagram. Oh, no, I wouldn't. But she, so she started out his, as his assistant on later on 2049. Mm-hmm. And now, and then she moved into assistant on Dune, and then second unit director on Dune Part Two, that's pretty which good. is a big fucking deal. Being second unit director of a movie like that, that's pretty. That's cool. crazy. So it looks like she might be uh, setting herself up to be directing film soon. Probably. Would that isn't that great? Like to be able to work with your partner, yeah. just like the Nolan, like Nolan and Thomas do. Snyder's too. Snyder's, yeah. It's just really cool. Downey's, Downey's yeah, do a great Downey. job. That's really cool. Yeah, good for them. Maybe Juno will work with us. <laughs> Juno. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back in some more news. Speaking of Dune, we have Rebecca Ferguson. She has joined the Chris Pratt in the thriller Mercy. It's her first movie since the big debut for Dune Part 2. It's not been that long, according to this article. Well, first thing she signed on since, okay, first, since Dune. All right, cool. Yeah. Now, this is a sci-fi thriller for Amazon MGM Studios. Wanted director Timur Bekmaktevov will helm the film from a script by Marco Van Bell. Pratt stars as a detective in the thriller set in the near future when capital crime is on the rise, and he finds himself accused of a violent crime and having to prove his innocence. Sounds like Minority Report. He sounds just like Minority <laughs> Report. Also, Timur Becca Mamdatov. He's he's good, but he's got too much of like a shaky uh, filmography. Um, wanted his best movie. He's made a couple of he's made plenty of movies in Russia, but I think that. I mean, he's, he hasn't proven himself to be a consistent director. So we'll see. We'll see. I do think that Chris Pratt and Rebecca Ferguson seems like a great pairing. Yeah, it does. I love them both. Yeah. Dearly. Dearly. <laughs> like family. <laughs> All right, what else do we got for news? <laughs> Mark Wahlberg uh, said in an interview that his recent string of family-friendly movies is a design in his career. He's only interested in making movies that the whole family can see uh, going forward. He's made his movie, his money especially with the Transformers movies. And so he's actually embracing getting older. So he's not going to try to keep doing like the action star roles as he gets older in age. And he's pref- he's preferring to do the family projects, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, he just did an action movie last year. Yeah. What, what was the action movie? He was like the, he's a spy in with the family. Yeah, it was still a family movie. Yeah, he's still shooting people. I doubt it was like really intense action yeah. in that movie. <laughs> 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 All right. Final bit of news. Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, passed away at the age of 68. His legacy will live on forever. A franchise and an IP that is loved around the world and some of the best characters ever written. I mean, Goku is going to be one of the best characters in fiction in the last 100 years in the tragedy. tragedy. I mean, we grew up with, with, with these shows. They are great shows to grow up with. They had a lot of fun. I remember always being excited to come home from school to watch the new Dragon Ball Z episode. Ah, ah, man. Uh, 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 uh. What are you doing over That's there? That's how they stand when they're not. They just spend uh, half the episodes. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> when you actually sum down the plots, like they stretch that shit. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they stretch that. <laughs> no, but like it was still great. It was awesome. I remember we used to draw a lot, and we used to always draw other characters. Yeah, all Dragon Ball Z characters are big. Like I was like perfected their hair. Hey, Boston Globe, what happened to my Goku? I sent you. I want it back. They framed it. <laughs> it's on. The, it's in the <laughs> it's like in their editor chief's office. <laughs> <laughs> the best drawing we've ever had. <laughs> A crayon drawing of Goku. Motherfucker, that was colored pencil, and it was the best drawing I'd ever done in my life. It was pretty good. <laughs> it's in the editor chief's office. It was pretty office. fucking. Was a, that was a good drawing. You got to admit. Even you were like, oh, it's pretty good for Jim. For Jim. <laughs> well, you're always better at drawing than me. Yeah. No, you you had talent. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to put me. You had t- talent. <laughs> no, you're a good drawer. I was way better than Way better, than, better average. than average. Way better, way better than, average. than average. Absolutely. But you're always better than me. I just had, I could just draw better as well. 
<laughs> nothing, nothing to be ashamed about. <laughs> just, I was just dope, man. I but could you, just, I could just. You got all the chicks, bro. Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a nine. I got all the chicks. And there's just drawing Gohan. And cars. Yeah. <laughs> Fast and Furious came out. And I would draw cars all the time. <laughs> I could just play. Remember, I did Jamie's project once. You did Jamie's project? He was in art school, and I did one of his projects where it was, he had to draw a fish with dot pen dots. Mm-hmm. And so he asked me to do it, and I did it, remember? Uh, I spent a week doing it, and I was listening to the Linkin Park, the new Linkin Park album on my CD player. Crying on repeat. in my <laughs> yeah. sleep, yeah. these words, they... So it was, um, he, stand, well, he, he drew a pencil, well. like the outline, it was like fish in a, in a tank with coral reef. And it had to be drawn with dots with an ink pen. And I'd spent a week doing it. It was his project. What did he give you? <laughs> I can't remember. Probably gave you like 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> You're like, whoa, $10. Oh, my God. You know, I, sat, I was in the downstairs kitchen doing it. I think I remember week, that, yeah. Night after night. I think yeah. I remember that. Jamie took advantage of you. Yeah, he gave me his – he had like very high-end pens, like artist pens. I had to do the whole thing with dots. Not, dots in little tiny circles. It was how you had to make the image. So you got Jamie's degree. For <laughs> yeah, I got his degree. It's so funny. He made me do his final thesis. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I want that degree. Yeah, give me that degree. All right. That wraps our episode of Movie News. Uh, we hope you all enjoy watching the Academy Awards tonight. I'm sure we'll react to it sometime this week. For episodes upcoming, we have tomorrow an episode on... You just did it. <laughs> what did we do? I always forget the things we just recently did. We did. <laughs> Hold on, it'll come to me. <laughs> the most remade movies of all, of time. all time. Most remade, most made characters, most made IPs. Most of adapted. All time. Yeah. yeah, so we went through the entire list. You'll be surprised what like the top ten are. You will be surprised. So you're you gonna know, be you're gonna be shocked. For example, A Star is Born is a movie that's been made four times. The Little Woman's a movie that's been made six times. These are all on the list. Yeah, and then there are some characters that have had more adaptations than you can imagine that'll make your head spin. More than you can imagine. More than you could ever. There's a character imagine. that ha- there are two characters that have over 90 film adaptations. Crazy. Wait until you hear about what we did. But it was an awesome episode. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So tune into that tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to become a patron at patreoncom slash Podcast. Get tickets to our live show in Boston on April 18th at RaidersOfLostPodcast.com. Be sure to leave those reviews five stars, please, on Spotify and Apple Podcast as well as share us with your family and friends. It's the best way for a podcast to grow. Word of mouth is key to our success. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well, notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.